The Baltimore Ravens made a greatly needed move. They re-signed Kyle Van Noy to a two-year deal. We talk about what it means for the Ravens and a lot more coming up next on the Sinister Reaction Live Edition of Locked on Ravens. You are Locked on Ravens, your daily Baltimore Ravens podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome into another edition of Locked on Ravens, your daily Baltimore Ravens podcast. I'm your host, Kevin Ostriker of Ravens Wire, here with you on the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you so much, as always, for being here and making Locked on Ravens your first listen of the day or of the afternoon here. If you're here with us live, we're free and available on all podcasting platforms, as always. So that includes in video form, on YouTube, audio form, wherever you get your shows. We bring you five days a week plus more of Ravens content. So news, analysis, updates, so much more. Tell a friend, tell a family member that we are here for them for their Ravens coverage. Really appreciate everybody tuning in, whether you are live with us here on Thursday, breaking down the live news that Calvin Noy officially has been re-signed, or of course these replays are available, both video and audio form. So no need to miss out. I see we already got some guys in the chat here, some people in the chat. Ravens win 16. That's what's up. Now trade for Matt Judon. We'll talk about Matt Judon a little bit in the uh, probably second and third parts of the show. I see Jeremiah saying, does this mean you'll relax or is panic pushed back to the line? I was never panicking, Jeremiah. But I do think, you know, look, offensive line, there's work to be done, but I'm not panicking right now. We're less than a month into free agency. I think it's okay to say, yeah, look, I'm not panicked, but there is definitely work to be done. Let's see what happens. That's kind of my mindset right now. I'm not panicking. I wasn't even necessarily panicking about the edge room. It was more just like, yeah, there's not a ton of experience. Work has to be done. Let's see what happens. And now we know Kaven Noy comes back to the Ravens. We got a lot of other people already. Raven 76 B more saying salute. What's up, Ray? I appreciate you always tuning in. Byard saying, woo, he's excited. Raven 76 B more again. Calvin Noy. Yes. So a lot to dive into. I was actually. I, if you didn't know, if this is your first time in, you haven't been keeping up. I've been pretty, very, very sick for a pretty long time now, about a week. And I'm still on the mend a little bit, feeling better. But to me, I I was actually out getting myself medicine and getting myself stuff to feel better. And this dropped. Like literally, I look at my phone and I'm like, it, I, I could have almost done the like drop to my knees in Walmart meme. I did that in, in a happy way. But so I, I got some of the stuff I needed, not all of it. I rushed back and now we're doing the live. So we're going to be talking a lot about that. And Jeremiah, I appreciate you, man. Uh, I appreciate your well wishes. And Jeremiah also says the work is fun to watch when Van Noy returns for a reasonable rate. And that's the deal. So and speaking of that, let's let's get into that first. Jeremiah kind of steering the conversation already. And I love that about the lives. We can go and just chat about things. Obviously, we do Monday through Friday. Those are premieres, so those are set shows. But these lives, they can go in any direction, and, and I love engaging in the chat with these. So Van Noy's two-year deal, it's a two-year deal worth $9 million with a million dollars in incentives each year. That comes from Ian Rappaport. That's a really good deal for Kyle Van Noy. I know a lot of people were kind of – and there, there was a big debate on it before the offseason started about which – if you could only have one which pass rusher would you rather have? Would it be Calvin Noy or Jadavian Clowney? It was pretty 50-50. I think a lot of the fan base was really excited about Calvin Noy, and a lot of the fan base was really excited about even just the possibility of getting a guy like Jadavian Clowney back. Now, both of them have somewhat, it's some similarities, but there are some different skill sets in there. We know how how good of a run defender Jadavian Clowney has been over the course of his career. That's really no secret, but Van Noy comes in there. He has nine sacks. It's a career high by a pretty wide margin for Van Noy. His previous career, career high was six and a half at the Patriots back in 2019. So beat his career high in sacks by good two and a half there provided some nice veteran leadership. Also was a disruptor in the backfield as well. I don't want to just say, Oh, out of all those guys, Jadavia and Clowney, he was the only guy contributing against the run. 
I thought that Van Noy actually held his own in some spots really well and made it. It always seemed like also Kyle Van Noy had that clutch gene throughout the year. I don't know if this is just me, but it felt like he was always in the right spot at the right time for the most part. And that was one of the things that I loved about his game. It was almost like, okay, it's a big third down. The Ravens need a big play here. I almost was like, all right, Kyle Van Noy, this is your time to shine. And he did that a lot. Now he said he was going to get a payday. He, he wanted a bit of a raise and look, he certainly got that. I see John in the chat saying he more than earned it last year. He absolutely did. And to be fair to Jadavian Clowney, Clowney earned his deal too, but the Ravens were never going to be in at that 10 million per season. And how this kind of progressed is honestly, I think a lot of fans, myself included, realistically understood that it was going to be one or the other, most likely both guys played exceptionally well on the, on the deals they had. And while it was potentially possible, they could have gotten both. It was more realistic. Only one were only one of the guys was going to return. So when Clowney ended up going first and there was no solution, there was no Van Noy in the roster already. They hadn't made that move. That's when I think the panic for some people sit in. Now I said, again, not panicking, but work has to be done. If it's not Kyle Van Noy, who is it going to be? Is it going to be Bud Dupree? Is it going to be Emmanuel Ogba? Van Noy was head and shoulders above everybody who was still out there in free agency. Not to mention, even though Mike McDonald is now gone, he knows the system. Zach Gore is going to be putting that out there. And he is already familiar with a lot of the defensive personnel. That's just, it, it's a few less steps you have to take. And plus, it's not like Van Noy was bad. It's not like, oh, well, yeah, you brought him back, but he wasn't that good, but he knows the system. Van Noy was really good last year. And it's a really good signing. I also, where's the point here? Yeah, Jeremiah saying Van Noy is super efficient. More sacks per game than Clowney, which is true. Clowney had, what, a nine and a half in, I think Van Noy played in 14 games. Did Clowney play in 16 games last year? He might have played in all 17, honestly. Let me pull this up quickly. Clowney played, and yeah, Clowney played in all 17 games last year. So while Clowney had technically more sacks with nine and a half, Van Noy did average more because it was nine and a half in 17 games for Clowney compared to nine in 14 games for Kyle Van Noy. So this was a move. And again, if Baltimore hadn't made it, would have not been fun, but there would have been a pivot option. But it's really fun to talk about the fact that, yes, they did make the move. And it's really fun. Byron, I appreciate your well wishes as well. I see that in the chat. Thank you so much for that. I see Dennis Hopps saying he just pulled up. And uh, it's exciting because there hasn't really been a ton of movement for the Ravens this offseason. They've lost player after player after player. And it's just felt like after the Derrick Henry signing, it's like, okay, well, who else is going to be the move? Who, who's going to be the next big guy, whether from inside or outside the organization? Now, they did resign Arthur Millette. That was big as well. But there really aren't, and we'll talk about this, there really aren't that many free agents that the Ravens have left at this point that I'm like, yeah, they they have to resign. It's... Not really a ton. J.K. Dobbins, Dalvin Cook, Daryl Worley, Brock Yassin. It's, uh, th that's really it. I mean, the only true unrestricted free agents left are those four. It's only Dobbins, Cook, Worley, and Yassin. Out of those four, I think that Worley has a decent shot to return, but I think the J.K. Ship ship has sailed. I think the Dalvin ship has sailed, and... I best believe the Rocky Asin ship has sailed as well. I think that sailed a lot, even during the season. So that's going to be really interesting to just see. All right. Now, now we're kind of done with the re-signing portion of the off season for Baltimore. Now it's essentially pivoting. which draft is a big part in Dennis. I see Dennis's comment. EDC will address the position either draft or cuts or both. And we'll get to that in the second part of the show, Dennis. It's a really good point. So the draft is going to be a really big pivot point for the Ravens. And also it's about, okay, now can you go and after compensatory picks no longer affect free agents, that's when Eric DaCosta and this Ravens team, that's when they like to do their work anyway. I would expect them to become very active with players who were still available in free agency who would have normally cost a comp pick when that officially goes away. We, we see the Ravens. They're currently in line, and it doesn't really matter who they sign at this point. They're going to probably get four comp picks. They've just lost so many guys. It's just a matter of 
to the degree of deal they sign. Will a bigger deal cancel out a fourth round comp pick? Will a bigger deal cancel out a fifth round comp pick? They don't want to cancel out those higher level comp picks. So it's just, look, it's a huge chess match, but sometimes things just aren't that complicated. And this was not that complicated. The Ravens, it felt like they needed to re-sign one of Clowney or Van Noy. If not both, they lose Clowney to Carolina. It's It kind of happened the same way that the Ronald Darby, Arthur Millette thing did. It felt like a lot of fans understood it was probably going to be one and not the other. But in my opinion, it, look, I would have preferred Darby personally. I just feel like the outside corner is more of a need than nickel right now. But Darby goes to Jacksonville. The Ravens re-sign Millette after that happens. Same thing with outside linebacker. Clowney goes to Carolina, and the Ravens end up getting back a guy who's really good still in Kyle Van Noy. Coming up, though, still have lots to talk about this on this live edition of Locked on Ravens. Still getting into Kyle Van Noy. Also talking about how this potentially changes draft plans for the Ravens. We'll be getting into that and a lot more. Stay tuned. Got so much to talk about on this live edition of Locked on Ravens. First, this episode is brought to you by eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. The formula for winning championships is also what keeps you ride or die alive. eBay Motors is everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has it covered. With over 120 million parts, your number one ride or die will always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. All the parts you need are the prices you want to season to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. Keep her out of that live at ebaymotors.com. Elzo and Zola, exclusive supply, eBay guaranteed fit, only available to U.S. customers. We're back our second segment of Locked On Ravens. Kevin Allstriker still talking with you. After the Ravens re-signed Kyle Van Noy, a two-year deal worth $9 million, an additional $1 million in incentives there in each year. Big move for Baltimore. Definitely shores up. The Ravens pass rushing group. I know there was a lot of uncertainty for some fans just about uh about the inexperience there. And I appreciate again everybody for tuning in. I, I do reserve again. I've been saying it all week. This is a little health update. Again, I've been sick. I've been struggling a little bit, well, a lot of bit with, with this thing, barely being able to talk. I save literally all my energy to do these shows. I, it's it's very much I'm resting and relaxing outside of this. But uh, no fever anymore. I had a 102.1 a couple days ago. It's now completely gone. Still got some symptoms, though. Stuffy, I'm sure you can hear it. Uh, coughing, throat still burns a lot. But show goes on. What can I say? Show goes on. So if I cough, I've never, I haven't done a live like this. So if I cough, I apologize. But back to the, the conversations. And let's get to Dennis's point. Then, Jeremiah, we'll talk about JK because I, I, I want to address this because I think there's some some good conversation in that. So thank you for bringing it up. But Dennis says that one EDC will still adjust the position, both in the draft or cuts. And I think this is true. Now, the fact that Van Noy is back is a big deal for the Ravens, right? It's not, it's not like yet yeah, you have re-signed Kyle Van Noy. Now everything is done. I still expect the Ravens to draft an edge player in this, in this class. Right. But here's the thing. Without Van Noy, it was getting very interesting in terms of what the Ravens wanted to do. Because, well, if a guy like Chop Robinson falls to you at 30, but then there are also two stud linemen and you didn't have Van Noy on the roster, it's like, well, okay, we don't really know about Van Noy right now, but we also know that offensive line is a huge need. If you're the Ravens, you're like, well, where do we go? I think with Van Noy back, it makes it more of a clear-cut decision where, sure, Chop, I think, has the potential to be a really, really good NFL player. But at this point, to me, the focus kind of turns back to offensive line. Now, I can still see an edge player being taken in the first round. I can still see a wide receiver being taken in the first round. I can even see a corner being taken in the first round, too. But now that Van Noy is back, you re-sign Millette. And even wide receiver-wise, you bring back Aguilar, and you've been kicking the tires on some other guys as well. It just it just feels like offensive line. That's that's the one right now. So to me, that's that's the interesting part of the draft where we can be talking a month from now after the draft happens, and we'll look back on it and say, "Wow, before free agency started, we would have never thought that this would have happened, or that would have happened, or this would have happened." And it's just such an ever changing process, even as far down to the pick right before the Ravens pick. I mean, it's just, it's so ever changing. So I agree with Dennis where 
the Ravens, I think, will still draft a guy. And then if there's a guy that gets cut, we, we see it all the time. Random things happen. Wanted to remember random with the facts snafu with Elvis Doomerville. Ravens never would have thought that thing would have happened where the Broncos don't get the facts in on time to re-sign Doomerville and the Ravens get this crazy good pass rusher for a couple of years. Things happen. So we're going to see. But this Van Noy signing, I think, gives a lot of people just – it lets people take a deep breath a little bit. Now the room – is Kyle Van Noy, the pass rusher room, Kyle Van Noy, Adafe Owe, David Ajabo, Tavius Robinson, and Malik Ham. It, it feels a lot better with the veteran, with Van Noy in there, as opposed to just Owe, Ajabo, Robinson, and Ham. Right? It, it, it just feels a little better. I think regardless whether you wanted Van Noy back or not, personally, I, I did. I was on the Van Noy train. But whether you wanted him back or not, they needed a veteran in, in some way, shape, or form. Now, Matthew Judon's been talked about a lot, and it makes a lot of sense. We actually talked about it a couple of days ago on Locked on Ravens, so if you want to go check out a more in-depth conversation, we did it with Tim Barbalace of 105.7 The Fan about Matthew Judon and, and that potential and why it makes sense. Yeah, it 100% does. Now, if you go and you add a Judon to that room, I think you don't draft a guy. You maybe draft a guy in the mid to later rounds, but you don't really spend an early pick. And honestly... I might not even pick an edge in the first round anymore unless the guy really, really, really falls. Like, depending on how I feel about Chop, their Dallas Turner is not going to fall. They're not going to be in that range. But there are four first round edge prospects this year. And you, you have to feel really good about one of them if one of them falls to take him at 30, because there are going to be some offensive linemen at 30 that Baltimore can take and honestly probably plug and play. And that's what they're kind of going up against. That's where. You kind of alleviate holes and alleviate decisions the more you do stuff like this. And the, the more you re-sign your own players, you plug in holes during free agency. Because we can talk all we want to about the draft before free agency, you know, before the season. But those those holes are there. Now, Baltimore has a lot of holes to fill just based off of how many guys they've lost. But they've also re-signed some guys and we're not going to see them just continuously make move after move after move, especially considering how much they love the draft. And as a reminder, this team does have nine draft picks. That's a lot of picks. And they love to move up and down the draft board. They could easily trade out of 30 if they have a couple guys that they like. I've I've kind of outlined the scenario before here on the show. If you're an everyday, you're probably tired of me talking about it. But if the Ravens get to 30 and they have seven or eight guys or five or six guys that they really like, they can trade back into the mid thirties, pick up an extra mid round pick, extra 2025 pick. And by the time they get to their new pick, they will probably still be one to three of those guys left where they can say, yeah, some of the guys we liked went off the board, but there are still plenty of other guys that are here that we would have been totally fine. Taken at 30 that we're totally fine. Taken here at whatever 35, let's just say 35. And that's how you pick up those extra picks. So 30, 30 is kind of a prime trade down spot. And I'm interested to see how they do how they kind of maneuver through it all now bit of a tangent about jk because i didn't want to talk about jeremiah's comment he says he disagrees with me about jk may as well play here since no money's on the market and i see well let's i'll read dennis's out too jk has issues teams don't want to put money into if you need to seek to find a good number on a one-year deal that would be great i'm all look talent wise i'm a hundred percent all for jk dobbins coming back to baltimore i think he's an exceptional player when he's healthy i think we all know what he can do when he's healthy the reason why I don't think it's realistic for JK to come back to Baltimore is not because I wouldn't want him there in Baltimore. I think it'd be awesome. But JK is looking for an opportunity to, on a one-year prove-it deal, get a decently hefty amount of carries and prove that he can be a consistent quality back, which I think everybody here in Baltimore knows he can be, but it's about the health question. JK is not going to get a lot of carries in Baltimore now. You know, Derrick Henry, if, if the Ravens had re-signed Gus and they had gone that route, yeah, it makes a lot of sense for J.K. to come back and essentially be in that committee role with Gus. But Derrick Henry is going to be the bell cow, which is something we haven't seen in Baltimore in a really long time, where it's been the committees for, for a decent while now. But Derrick Henry is going to be your 18, 20, 22 carry, 25 carry per game guy. You're going to sprinkle Justice Hill in. And then, but then when Keaton Mitchell comes back, essentially JK would be reduced 
to your number four if they value Justice and Keaton over him. And J.K. is not a number four. So I would love J.K. back, but I just I just don't think it's it's realistic at this point, which, which is unfortunate. I love J.K. I think he's a really talented player, but I just don't think it's going to happen personally. And again, appreciate all the well wishes. I see him in the chat here. Uh, with Van Noy, let's, let's just round that out here, and then we'll get to some more comments in the final part of the show and, and more general Ravens talk. This Van Noy signing, I think also, you look at all three levels of this defense, it, it just shores up a lot. I think with Baltimore, they needed uh, – every team needs leaders, and Baltimore has plenty of them. But Van Noy showed himself to really embrace the Baltimore culture, em- embrace the team, embrace his new teammates. And I-, I think a lot of people put a lot of stock and a lot of notice into that, which, again, is valuable. <clears throat> it's not all about – what happens on the field and everything that goes on there. The production on the field was awesome, but Van Noy also brought energy to the Ravens. He was screaming. He was hyping his teammates up on the Ravens wired. Everybody loved that energy. It, it just felt like a lot. And again, Jadavian Clown is a big loss for them. I'm not, I'm not trying to sugarcoat that or necessarily gloss over it or anything like that. But the fact that they did get Van Noy back, it gives them options to say, yes, for Baltimore, are you going to completely entrust that spot next to Van Noy or, or opposite of Van Noy? Is that going to be always spot full time now? Do they want to bring in a Judon or do they want to draft a younger high prospect? That's that's the conversation that's next. They've got the veteran, but is there more veteran help a la Matt Judon? We'll talk about that a little bit. Or is it, hey, you know what? It's Adafi always time. It's now or never. Let's see what it is. So we're going to see what happens and coming up with the final part of the show. We'll continue talking Calvin Noy, but also getting into some general Ravens coverage. So be sure to stay tuned. Got a ton to get to on this live edition of Locked on Ravens. So don't go anywhere. First, this show is brought to you by Robin Hood. Because, you know, even if, if, if you have a 401k for retirement, you can still have an IRA. Robin Hood is the only IRA that gives you a 3% boost on every dollar you contribute when you subscribe to Robin Hood Gold. But get this now through April 30th. Robin Hood is even boost on every single dollar you transfer from other retirement accounts with a 3% match. That's right. No cap on a 3% match. Robin Hood Gold gets you the most for your retirement thanks to their IRA with a 3% match. This offer is good through April 30th. Get started at Robinhood.com slash boost. Subscription fees apply and now for some legal info. Claim is of Q1 2024, validated by Radius Global Market Research. Investing involves risk, including loss. Limitations apply to RRAs and 401ks. 3% match requires Robin to gold for one year from the date of the first 3% match. Must keep Robin and IRA for five years. The 3% matching on transfers is subject to specific terms and conditions. Robin and IRA available to U.S. customers in good standing. I'm a financial LLC member. SIPC is a registered broker dealer. We're back. Locked on Ravens here on Thursday afternoon. Appreciate everybody being here with me live. These live shows are great. We get a bunch of comments. We'll get to some of those as we continue on through this final part of the show here on Locked on Ravens. But if you're new to the channel, thank you so much for being here. Be sure to hit that like button. Also, that subscribe button as well it means a lot to me. We've been building this up for a while. I've been doing this for almost five years. Tomorrow will be my 1,000. 220th episode consecutively of this show of never missed a weekday. Obviously we do live episodes like it, like this after every big Ravens piece of news, live Ravens games as well. Also bonus episodes. So tell a friend, tell a family member we're here. And also thank you. Shout out to the everydayers and people who have already been here before really appreciate your continued support, but let's continue. <coughs> Excuse me. Talking Calvin. No, I knew I was going to cough once. I, I tried, I tried, but I couldn't do it. Well, we'll see if I can get through the rest of it without coughing. But for Baltimore, I see Optimus Prime saying good signing will be helpful for the young guys. Now get a big body receiver and an offensive lineman. Yeah, that, that's kind of the checklist for me. Skill set wise, wide receiver with the big body who can go up there and ke- bring down those contested catches. That to me is the skill set I'm looking for. Plus, uh, obviously, multiple offensive linemen. I see Jeremiah saying definitely wants a wide receiver, multiple linemen. But I have no idea who the BPA would be. It, it just depends. You know, it's it's such a loaded question because we don't know how the draft board is going to play out at all. It's when I do my mock draft Mondays for, for the show. I'm just like, I don't know what, what the heck's going to happen this time because even the simulators are so unpredictable. Draft night, real life, is like 10 times more unpredictable than that. I see Dennis saying Van Noy deserves to come back after his last game. That that fight in a dog is what we need. Yeah, he, he's a fighter. He, he, he goes hard. He's someone who brings that. And I was very... 
pleasantly surprised. Not that I didn't think he had it, but I just loved the energy. I loved the energy he brought. Jin saying offensive line might be the pick in round one. I, I think I think it is. I think it is. You know, my dream would probably be a Troy Fowtownu or, or Marius Mims, one of those players. I don't think they're going to fall. You're maybe more so looking at a Tyler Guyton, Jordan Morgan, et cetera, we're going to see. But there are a lot of quality options. Uh, yeah, Jin saying, or I see Alexander first saying, bring back Borley if they think he can stay healthy. Maybe bring back Dalvin, depending on the draft. And that's what it's just, it's depending moves. Every move has a subsequent reaction where you make a move, it means something. This move, to me, this is my interpretation. To me, it means that if there is a good offensive lineman and a good edge guy, you got those two at 30. The fact that you have Van Noy now and you look at the roster, you have three holes, starters, gone on the offensive line. You got a good offensive lineman, got a good edge guy, you're taking the offensive lineman. That, that to me, is what it means. Also, I see Jin saying it's either offensive line or receiver in the first round. I could see it. I think corner is a sneaky need. But if we're being honest, and this is kind of a live, this will be a live hot take I drop right now. I think edge is off the board for Baltimore in the first round. Still a need for him in terms of, yeah, they they should probably add one more guy, whether it's a veteran or a, a draft pick or whatnot. But I, I I think edge is kind of really far down there where I'm giving it like a 5% chance to be picked. I think corner is a sneaky need. Wide receiver, offensive line. That's probably the order. And you can you can maybe maybe inner, inner flip corner and, and wide receiver, but we're going to see. Byron, I appreciate you. My passion is incredible. That, that means a lot to me. I the show means a lot to me. Covering Baltimore sports means a lot to me. I'm also involved in the Ryan Ripken show now, and that's covering not only Ravens, but, you know, big on Orioles. And, you know, it, it means a lot. I've been building this for a really long time, social media-wise. You know, Eclipse 30,000 followers on, on Twitter a couple months ago, and that meant a lot to me. But none of this happens without anybody listening, watching, consuming my content. So it means a lot, and I'm very passionate about what I do. Uh, Alexander saying, if they don't draft a running back, get Dalvin. I think Dalvin be a, would be a fine guy. And that honestly would make more sense than JK just because, you know, I can see Dalvin Moore as a fourth running back once Keaton comes back as opposed to JK. I, I just think JK is better at this point. And Dalvin to me, not that I think he's a bad player. I think he's actually still has stuff in the tank. The whole signing thing with him was really weird. But at the end of the day, I think JK needs to go somewhere where he can showcase his talent and that he still has legs, you know, and still can be healthy for a full season. Whereas Dalvin, it's like, all right, it's time. You know, it's almost like Derrick Henry. It's time to win a Super Bowl. Let's go get it. Uh, Jin saying, or Jeremiah saying, Elvis was nice. Doomerville was awesome. But Jin saying, post June one cuts. Also, really big deal. Dennis saying, it depends on who's on the big board that EDC wants offensive line, pass rusher, wide receiver. Draft is perfect for the staff. St for the staff meaning the positions of need is deep in this class. I No, I agree. Dennis, to me, it's a good year to need an offensive lineman. It's a good year to need a wide receiver. It's a good year to need a corner. And it's a good year to need a, to need a pass rusher. Now, I think it's a better year to need an offensive lineman and a wide receiver. Corner still, there are some quality options. But the four big Ravens needs, it's a good year to need some of those positions. So it, it's really interesting. Uh, comp saying if the, for Michael Penix, if the Penix hype train keeps gaining momentum, someone has to, someone has to fall. I agree to me. I think that, uh, you know, <coughs> excuse me, the way that Baltimore is kind of maneuvering through the best case scenario for them, you get Brock Bowers taken early. I think that's going to happen. They don't need a tight end corner wise. If the, if, a Terry on Arnold goes, they're not going to be in Terry on Arnold range. Keon, Kenyon Mitchell, he goes fine. But if they don't really love any other corners, if all the first round corners go, that's fine for them because it pushes offensive linemen down. If all four of those big corner uh, quarterbacks, excuse me, go, then that's good as well. What other positions don't the Ravens need? If there's an inside linebacker that goes, if a running back crazily gets taken in the first round, now, there are going to be some big offensive linemen that go, some wide receivers, obviously, that go. They're not going to get Malik Neighbors. They're not going to get Marvin Harrison Jr. They're not going to get Joe Alt, Dallas Turner, right? They're not going to be in that range, but there are crazy things that happen. Kyle Hamilton falling to 14. That was a crazy thing that happened. So that's a good point there as well. Uh, Jeremiah saying, honestly, it doesn't matter what, what he's looking for. Best thing you can do is a tandem with the King, carving out a third down role. And again, the the longer free agency goes, and this isn't this is the JK, 
But the longer free agency goes, the less options end up you get out there. Maybe he just does resign. But I feel like my prediction, I said this a couple weeks ago. My prediction is he goes to Dallas. We're going to see what ends up happening, though. Nano Rave 8, check it in, saying I'm glad we got Kyle Van Noy back. Let's keep it moving, EDC. I'm, I'm glad, too. Steve O saying draft BPA, wide receiver, edge, offensive line, corner. Hype for Mims. Guyton Kinsley's crazy. Mims stays hurt. He gets hurt. Guyton and Kingsley, poor hand placement. will take years to fix. And those are some of the strengths and the weaknesses of this class that you got to go with. For Mims, he's, I think he has one of the most, the biggest, highest ceilings that this class has to offer offensive line wise. But Steve O did say the injury history is real. Didn't really have a ton of opportunity at Georgia because he was injured. So that's a big thing. Is Mims plug and play ready? That is, to me, a big question with him, but his potential is all the way out there. And yet one, yeah, I'm trying, Jeremiah. I've coughed twice. I usually edit the coughs out, but obviously with live, just got to, just got to power through them. And I'm fortunately not, not healthy enough to go more than 30 minutes without coughing. So I tried, but we got two coughs so far and I appreciate you NRA for saying this. Congrats, Kevin. Congrats on your podcast. Grow so well-deserved. Really enjoy your shows. I, I appreciate you tuning in. You know, I know you've been here for a while, so it means a lot. You've been growing with me and, and you've been along for the ride. So thank you for that. I see uh, Jacob Ardarius is going to have a Brandon Stevens season. Just wait to me. And I can't, I really wish I remember who said this, but someone said Ardarius Washington is going to take over the Geno Stone third safety role. I personally love this. If you've been with me, you know, if you're like Nana Rave, you've been with me for a while on Locked On Ravens. I have been pouting the Ardarius Washington table since before he got drafted. I was all in on him. Would take him in the third round in a heartbeat in that draft. He fell undrafted. He, to me, is a perfect player to take over that Geno Stone role. Now, I know Baltimore's kind of been playing him as a nickel guy. Hasn't gotten a ton of opportunity. But with him, that corner safety versatility... I, I am all for Jacob, this Ardarius Washington breakout here. I, I'm all for that Brandon Stevens season. I see Tanya's checking in, saying some reinforcements. Let's go. Absolutely, Tanya. Really enjoying enjoying the Kyle Van Noy back. And I see uh, Nana Ray saying, you go get a drink, Kevin. We understand you're sick. I'm under the weather myself. Take care. I am taking care. We're going to be back here, though, tomorrow, 6 a.m. Rocker DeSangro is going to be joining us, our Thursday guest. We're going to be talking more about the Van Noy signing. Comp saying, I wonder who's going to be our new backup fullback on the Ben Mason's part of the Los Angeles Ravens. Yep, going over to Los Angeles, Ben Mason did. Now, what I hope is the Ravens don't draft another fullback in the fifth round. Don't really. The Ben Mason era was interesting. Maybe it's not even over. Maybe the Ravens, maybe the Chargers get rid of him and they bring him back. And the Ravens bring him back. I don't know. But hopefully the Ravens do not draft a fullback in the fifth round. That would cause another, uh, not not so good reaction from the fan base there. And yeah, Tanya saying if Ardarius can stay healthy, he's so small. He seems to get injured often. Smaller guy for sure. But if he can stay healthy, I think he's going to have one heck of a year. So Kyle Van Noy back in Baltimore, two years, $9 million, a million each year in incentives. Great move for the Ravens. We'll be talking about it more here tomorrow on Locked on Ravens. So be sure to subscribe. Be sure to check in with us, both audio form and video form, hit the notification bell on YouTube, the subscribe button. It means a lot to me. We're growing this show. We have a great community, both in video form and audio form and social media subtext as well. That link's in the description the description below. So be sure to check that out. See you right back in tomorrow on Locked on Ravens. We'll be talking more Ravens football. Talk to you soon.